Hello everybody, this is Monster of Tech here, back with another video, and today's video is a WWDC 2018 recap. So they started off with kind of like a nature video almost. So it, it kind of like parodied the nature video, like how there was like this guy in the, with the Australian accent, like narrating like people come to flock here once a year. And then they, they narrated just uh, crowding Craig for a uh, selfie. And, <laughs> and then they... Uh, that was the opening video this year, so uh, that's that was kind of funny. Um, and then uh, the Tim Cook came to the stage and like welcomed everybody, just like good morning. Um, and then they went over some like updates, like uh, the App Store. So the App Store turned fifty, um, ten years old, not fifty years. It turned ten years old, and uh, they just basically said. They just basically went over how much they paid to developers. I think it was like a hundred billion or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like a hundred billion. So they went over the App Store 10th birthday, like happy birthday App Store. And then they're like, this is amazing, a hundred billion dollars to the developers. Yep, it was a hundred billion dollars. And then after that, they dived right into the uh, software. <coughs> so, um... He, Tim Cook said that there was not going to, he's, well, I, he didn't really say this, but he said it was going to be chock full of software, so that basically meant that there's no hardware, basically. So, um, they started with iOS first, um, and then Craig came back up to the stage, um, yeah, so he came back up to the stage, and then he basically, like, said, hey, Next, next iOS 12, you guys probably guessed the name, and then, um, like he said, it was going to be a free update, and then he went on to updates, like saying how updates shaped the entire OS, taking like a nostalgic look back <clears throat> with like the iPhone 3GS 4, let's find my iPhone, and then after that, he looked at all of the, the timeline of them, so he said um, half the customers of iOS were on by seven weeks. And then he kind of poked fun at the uh, Android. He's yeah. So even though it's not as good as an uh, as iOS 10, he still poked fun at uh, Android. Even though uh, iOS 11 might have a little less than uh, iOS 10. And then he said that all of the devices that support iOS 11 will have 12. This is really good and um, new wallpaper and. They, they're mainly focusing on speed improvement, so they basically kind of showed you charts of like how they improve it, and then they showed some key improvements. Um, so yeah, they, they um, mainly focused on improvements, and then they had this uh, AI or the AR thing with Pixar. That's pretty cool. They had Adobe come to a stage, and then they had this cool demo. Craig had this cool demo where you measured the suitcase. And then uh, they went to the uh, the most significant ones, or the notifications, where you can have the notifications where you're not looking at it when you're sleeping. It doesn't really obstruct you when you're sleeping. Um, and they're better. They look better notifications. They're, like, dynamic now. And you can, like, kind of, like, have cool stuff on them. And they're also grouped now. So that's one less thing that Google Pixel fans can whine about um so now they're grouped and uh there's screen times now so now it will remind you when you should stop and it will give you a little screen at the end and you can override it and then they went to iMessages had they now have tongue detection for iOS 12 so you can stick your tongue out now where you couldn't do that before um, <laughs> um that's kind of cool i guess and they added some new ones like the ghost, um, like a koala, T-Rex, and a, and a little leopard or tiger. So there's the T-Rex, there's all four of them. <laughs> um, and then they have this Memoji. Um, so it looks like yourself. It kind of reminds me of the Samsung emoji. I forgot what they were called. But it, they look better. They don't look, they don't look as, they don't look like the uh terrible samsung emoji <laughs> but they they do look 
Okay, they do look good. They have the same technology with Animoji, so you still control your face movements and everything. So that's cool, and then you can build it, like you can change it if you want, and you can send it on iMessage too. So they were just basically showing this off. You can uh, choose whoever you want. You can change. It doesn't have to look like you. Uh, and you can have so many different combinations. And then um, they had somebody else come to the stage and demo it. So they can kind of like, so she can kind of show you. And like you can like put the mask on your face in real life. And then put like little stickers by your side and new filters too. No, but I don't really use filters honestly, but I guess people do. And then uh, Craig came back up and he was like, "Hey, this is great." And then he had uh, FaceTime. He put FaceTime and then he's like dual call FaceTime. Um, so you can have up to like 32 or something members in the FaceTime and they're in. The people who are more prominent, they should have a larger uh, footprint on it, uh, if you say that. So, like, if they talk, then their little bubble blows up a little bit. So, it's bigger. <clears throat> and um, you can also have, like, emojis and, like, the little face emojis on top of your face. And then the uh, color filters as well. So, you can kind of conceal your identity if you want. So, um, yeah, we, I, that's not really a surprise to us, but it's kind of cool. So, that basically wrapped up iOS 12. Um, so, it's not that much of an improvement off of 11. It's not like the ma massive overhaul people said it would, but just a nice, it's a nice feature. It's, not, it's a nice stability improvement. So, now we're with the Apple Watch, uh, Watch OS series, wait, Watch OS 5. So they added like walkie talkie. So it's basically like you can like press it and then talk to them. They have web pages, you can load web pages. I don't know why it wasn't like that before. And but now they have podcasts, updated uh Siri faces and some more stuff. So that's pretty much it with Watch OS. So um then they went to Apple TV. So Apple TV, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice updates there. It's uh, pretty noticeable, like especially if you have a home theater, because they added Dolby Atmos now. So for the people who are complaining that there's no Dolby Atmos now, they got it for you. Um, so it's really nice. So it's the only they said it was the only uh, TV little set top box that has a, a Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Um, so that's pretty cool. And the movies on iTunes have free upgrades. And then after that, they went over, like, you can have your TV on it and then zero sign-on. So what zero sign-on is, is it basically talks to your network, the Wi-Fi network, to see if you have the plan, and then it'll not sign you in. And then they have these new faces, these new, like, screensavers, like the Earth one, and you can tap it, and then it'll show you where it is. And then the last one and probably the most notable is Mac. So Mac OS, um, um, it was not called Mac OS Super High Sierra, but instead it was uh, called Mac OS Mojave. So um, they kind of looked at, they kind of had a look back at previous California named OS's like Maverick, uh, Yosemite, El Capitan, Sierra, and High Sierra. Uh, they kind of said, hey, these are nice, and then they kind of highlighted that Mavericks was the first free one, and then um, <clears throat> they just kind of like had talked about High Sierra, and then they had this uh, little nice trailer for Mojave. So uh, they they had it like really cool trailer, and then something that really made people like wow is the dark mode. So. Now Mac OS Mojave has a dark mode built in, so this is really cool. Um, so it's really nice, the dark mode. Everything is dark now, and I and it even makes the wallpaper behind the, the desktop uh, darker. So that's really cool. Everything is darker now, so like the navigation bars, everything's darker. 
So uh, it's a better version of the top bar being black. So now everything's black. It looks so nice. Wish they did this with iOS. Like the smart invert's okay, but it sh it should be like this. Like that would be really really nice. So like again, everything is darker, and then the uh, Xcode prompts, the Xcode lines of code are also dark. That made people happy. Um, considering it is a developer conference, but yeah. So that is really cool, the dark mode. And then they also had this nice little demo of where you could have like dynamic wallpaper. So like as the day goes on, it gets, it looks like it's like nighttime over there when it's nighttime where you are. And when it's noon, it looks like it's noon on the wallpaper. So that is just really cool. Um, and then they also have this new like, this new uh, screenshot thing where you could like <clears throat> there's like this new editing interface in the finder so instead of like opening up preview you can just edit it right on the little screenshot and it has a little screenshot preview in the bottom corner so that's kind of like the iPads and iPhones on iOS 11 and then you can there's new uh, new little actions you can take in the little pop-up box and so you can select stuff and then you can edit it right on the little pop-up. <clears throat> so, um, and then you can also record videos too. So you can screen record videos in a specific little tile. So that's really cool. So like they demoed it with like a little asteroid catching thing, like a little asteroid simulation. That's uh, pretty nice. And then they put it into a PowerPoint or keynote presentation sorry um but yeah they they could put the video in and it was really cool so screen recording on that really nice um so you can like record stuff from a website like you can kind of like put a youtube video like just kind of record the youtube video right on the page so that's really cool and then he inserted it into his keynote presentation and then he also had this thing where you can have continuity with the phone. So instead of using the webcam on your Mac, you can use the FaceTime camera on your iPhone. So that's really cool because now you could take the photo on your iPhone. Just take the photo. Um, and then you could send it. You could hit use photo and then send it. And then it will pop up right on the Mac. And then that's... That's really cool because like now you don't have to like airdrop it over. And you can also use the uh, iPhone to scan stuff. And now moving on to apps. They built in the news app. Um, I don't know why. Well actually yeah. They built in the news app because they like it. The news app's actually pretty nice. And then they also built it into iPad as well. Um, they built in stocks I think. So like if you want to look at stocks and if you want, if you use stocks even, they have that. But they also really adapt this news app really well. So um looks like it was built specifically for the Mac, even though finding out later it wasn't. It was just adapted from their new Apple app building thing. <clears throat> And then the stocks app, they have like the news stories on the right and then the stock quotes on the left. And then they brought voice memos to the Mac. Uh, and then they basically highlight that it can iCloud sync everything. And then they had home app as well. And then they started with privacy. Um, they started discussing how they're committed to privacy. Um, they said how like you can choose what you want to share and we we don't really want to take anything so they kind of like highlight that they're the best for privacy and they also add camera and microphone too where they have to ask you now so now if they if an app wants to use your camera it gives you a little pop-up to confirm that you want to have it using it and they also block the comment sections because they track you so they're really going after the uh the advertisers they don't want tracking you and then they they highlight that you have a fingerprint on the Mac so that basically means that people know that's you on the that is your Mac so they said that they 
uh, mix everything up so uh, the, it looks like your Mac is all the other Macs so they don't know which one is which so that is really cool um, so they won't be able to track you as well so they also have this on the iPhones on iOS and the iPads and then they went to the App Store they said like they redesigned it so it looks more like the iOS App Store now so it like has these little t the the big tiles now it's no longer the old interface so they have this nice streamlined uh, App Store it looks better in my opinion than the old one um, especially with the dark mode and then they have metal machine learning and then they just went over like how they're better and they kind of like had this demo of Fortnite <laughs> probably the best part for some people um, they basically said metal enables it to work on the iPhone Mac everything all the Apple products and they basically went over that metal has over a billion users just basically to say that hey you should use metal to the future developers and then they showed this nice scene looked like it was actual natural but it was rendered on a MacBook Pro with an eGPU and then they went over machine learning um, and then they they had this are you merging iOS and macOS and then they said no we're not doing it although for a second we people thought they were because it kinda looked like it but they said no but when we think that they aren't they uh, basically said but we are merging we will have an option to merge iOS and macOS apps. So, um, to the no on the macOS before they kind of went out with the app thing, they said they were built for two different things, and then they showed the games and web and things, and then they showed the sneak peek to the uh, iOS macOS app hybrid. So they basically went over, hey, iOS is the best app store in the world, and then they're like, why not merge it with macOS? So they have it. UI kit right there and then you can like optimize your iOS app for trackpad and mouse input and then they reveal that all the news stocks and all the other apps have been just transferred by that way and they said it's coming in 2019 so then they just went over all the features of Mac OS Mojave and then some new some other ones that um, they did not discuss and then they showed the cool wallpaper feature again. Then Craig left the stage. And then Tim came back onto the stage. Um, he Then he after that, he started wrapping things up by going over iOS 12, new features, the Memoji, the uh, uh, Apple Watch, Watch OS 5, the new tvOS. I think it's tvOS 12, although they have not said tvOS 12 they just said the new tvOS and macOS Mojave um, and then they look they just showed all the products together the new looks really like the space look on the tvOS they said the developer beta is today which is June 4th and then the public beta is like later in the month and then they just went over developers are like thank you you guys are great um, this would not have really been possible without you and then hey start clapping uh, Tim Cook start clapping uh, and then um, after that they kinda went through this video and then the video was kinda like just showing people developers families and stuff asking them what a developer is so that's pretty cool and then after that they just thanked developers again and then Tim Cook started leaving the stage and then like people started clapping clapping you know, just like really really loud clapping <laughs> and then after that like it started dimming the lights started dimming on the stage and then uh, that people started leaving so this has been a monster of tech video please consider liking commenting and subscribing and I will see you in the next one.